the new system of private property and proceeds of labor, not in land. I therefore propose that we forthwith introduce a system based on private property, personal freedom, and individual responsibility. That is a system in which each individual shall own the proceeds of his labor and bear the responsibility of his deeds. Not private property and land, no privileges and opportunity, but private property and the proceeds of labor, so that whatsoever a man sow, that may he also reap. The land itself to be surveyed and leased to the highest bidders, that is, each man to assess the value of his own opportunity in competition with his fellows. He who wants the best land must pay the highest rent. He who takes the poor land need pay no rent. The rent of land is nature's board of equalization by which all her bounties are equitably apportioned amongst all. The proceeds of the rental fund to be equitably divided or socially utilized. Footnote. With free land, all the forces inciting to internecine strife and international animosity vanish. Men compete on equal terms for the occupancy of sites. Each occupies on terms satisfactory to himself and to all others. The state shrinks in influence and power. Religion, science, education, and commerce are freed from state ligaments. The souls of men respond to the Creator. The organism of society grows in obedience to natural law. State tariffs, market barriers, arbitrary control of exports are revealed as the instruments of special privilege and human exploitation and degradation. Free land and interest-free money liberates the bodies and souls of men. These are the essential conditions, the indispensable foundation of the stateless state. The ideal of Schiller, Tolstoy, Gazelle, and George. Without them, laissez-faire is the license of industrial autocracy. With them, laissez-faire is objective and consummation of glorious freedom. End of footnote. The Office of Money To permit personal freedom and to coordinate individual effort and to a cooperative whole, we shall need money. The office of money is to inject emulation and competition into static cooperation and to weld into a cohesive whole the diverse activities of competing individuals. It renders cooperation competitive and competition cooperative. It, it permits the highest possible production and the widest possible diffusion of wealth. 
It increases individual rewards and facilitates the highest possible social development. Without money, we cannot evolve from primitive communism with its individual repression and social stagnation to liberty, culture, and abundance. With money, we can produce wares, that is, surplus goods for exchange with the surplus of others. Money permits the minute subdivision of tasks, recognizes individual effort, permits the cultivation of special skills, increases the total output, and facilitates the prompt exchange of wares. We can make our money by means of the Gutenberg invention. The Potato Standard Our money will have no gold covering, and it will need none. Gold has never made, gold has made, and never can make. An efficient money instrument. Our money will be covered by wares. I suggest that we choose our chief crop, the potato, as coverage for our money. We have built warehouses for the storage of our potatoes. Let us issue paper money, redeemable on demand in potatoes. The supply of money to be adjusted to the stock of potatoes. Thus, we shall have a paper money, good in all parts of the island, available for the purchase of anything, the supply of which can never be monopolized by anybody. Thus, we shall enjoy the advantages of a system which will enable each man to increase his own reward without injustice to others, which will promote individual freedom, impose self-responsibility, and foster independence, and permit social growth. Comrades, attend tomorrow's meeting for this discussion of this proposition. Diego Martinez the teacher. Advantages of the manure standard. The Chronicle records that the proposal of Diego Martinez was discussed fully and ultimately adopted. During the discussion, someone objected to the use of potatoes as covering for the currency notes and advocated the use of stable manure on the grounds that the more regular Production and use of stable manure would render it better fitted for the purpose in mind. He spoke very much as follows. There are years when many potatoes are harvested. In those years, there would be much money. There are other years when there is a potato crop failure. In these years, there would be a shortage of money. All such fluctuations would be avoided by the use of stable manure as money coverage. Moreover, stable manure contains the protoplasmic germ, the very foundation of human existence, and hence the primary source of all value. It is in general demand, and the demand exceeds the supply. There can never be too much stable manure. The coverage for money should be a stable product of general utility. Such a coverage is not found in gold, which is almost useless, nor in potatoes, which fluctuates in volume and in value, but in stable manure, which tends strongly to stability.